Let's get more on this from Joseph Foudy, who's an associate professor of economics at New York University. He joins us now from New York. Uh, Joseph, really great to have you with us. First of all, um, what is your reaction to sort of phase one of this deal? And, and how can you explain this to, I guess, Americans or American businesses on how this might impact them? Well, this is clear progress, and it's a small win for the administration and, and for U.S.-China trade. Uh, but, you know, it is phase one. Essentially, what we've gotten is promises of openness and some guarantees to purchase some more uh, U.S. agriculture and manufacturing goods in return for the U.S. Uh, not escalating to the next step. Uh, and for this, China is essentially buying time. So Secretary, the Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin said that between this and the USMCA, which is replacing NAFTA, that's the trade agreement between the United States, Mexico and uh, Canada, for our viewers that aren't familiar, um, that that's going to significantly increase the, the points uh, of, of the U.S. GDP, 50 to 70 is that accurate? Where does that number come from, first of all? And um, and how does that sort of contribute to the U.S. leveling the play, playing field when it comes to these agreements? Yeah, I, I'm skeptical of those numbers. Um, you know, in, in large part, we think the U.S. trade deficit, which we have with about 90 percent of the countries in the world, is really a product of a lack of domestic savings. And so if we can push more exports to China, this may mean that uh, we're selling less to others or importing on some other side. Um, in the longer run, if we can get a stronger recognition of intellectual property rights, that can make a difference. But I don't think we're going to necessarily see uh, a sudden change overnight. Uh, even if China agrees to buy $100 billion more U.S. goods, that's in a, a $20 trillion U.S. economy, to, to put it in perspective. So phase one is out of the way with what are the potential sticking points or roadblocks uh, down the road with these subsequent phases? And, you know, the U.S. markets have certainly been reacting off of any news when it comes to a trade deal between the U.S. and China. Are we out of the woods with some of these big market dips that we've seen in the wake of those uh, tit for tat tariffs? Uh, we're not, only because, uh, you know, there's an election coming up in the U.S., so there was a motivation to get a win. Uh, and China is, uh, you know, dealing with um, a weakening domestic economy. There's plenty of the news about Hong Kong and Taiwan. And, you know, it, it has an incentive to push in the future, too. Um, but also the, the details to be negotiated in future rounds are more sensitive. Uh, we avoided discussions of things like cyber theft and just focused narrowly on intellectual property in China. Um, and, and those, those future issues are going to be much more nettlesome. Uh, they're also just going to be harder to observe. We can monitor trade flows. We'll know if China buys $100 billion worth of goods this year. How you define, determine, or measure whether they're cooperating on intellectual property, that's going to be virtually impossible. And how does the Chinese government enforce this on tens of thousands of firms?